powerful about the way uh, a giant canvas goes. It's just got that kind of overarching, stretching feeling. <laughs> It's uh, it's funny because you, you you use different muscles that you've never really used before to just experience it and interact with it. The subtleties of little finger motions don't quite get the uh, the strength you want and the line quality or the size you want. The things that work on little canvases don't always work as well with with the big canvases. You have to use like your whole arm from like your elbow to your shoulder. And so the strokes are more clean and more when you want to have like a circular type of shape. That ball joint is just capable of doing so. So much better. The hard part is if you've ever injured any part of your body. Oh, like your shoulders, your neck, or your back. <laughs> you hear that ball pin hitting a nail into uh, into concrete sand in the back of your skull as things pop and kind of move around. Uh, it's an interesting feeling. I've gotten too used to it after a while. It's not painful, it's just loud. It's an internal loudness. And then because it's a giant piece, you're, you're constantly adjusting and readjusting and adjusting some more and going forward and backward and through all that, it's gigantic. And so you're doomed to have tiny fuzzy visitors walking across every canvas. If you put something on the ground, unless you lock them out, which... I don't like to do. I like to let them wander and do their thing. Otherwise, I'll just beat on the door. It's just, uh, you fall into the process. The process becomes you. You are the process. There's this kind of wild funness about all of it. It's winter here right now, so the snow has compacted into large amounts of ice everywhere. <laughs> it's almost uh, frustrating sometimes. It's beautiful in some parts where nothing's touched it. There are no footprints. There are no tracks or trails. It's just how the land decided to make its own texture. It's really kind of powerful and beautiful at the same time. You can't really manufacture like that feeling. And so you just kind of continue to roll through all of it. You want to make these pieces feel as if they're infinite. I remember like working on this giant piece once and I didn't realize it until I was, until I took a break several hours and that my forearms up to my, the, probably the base of my pinky were kind of dusted and covered in different inks and paints and such. And then I looked down and like my whole crotch <laughs> to like thigh area in these pants I had on had like little streaks and marks. I had some in my stomach and even had a little bit on my face from where I just, I'd scratch my face and I didn't realize it. And it was just, at first I, I remember brushing it off and going like, oh crap, this is everywhere now. And then eventually it became kind of like wearing like a badge almost. Like, I'm a painter. Here's my proof. <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny that way. Like you're, whether other people see it or not, you are, but it is nice sometimes to wear the uniform. Because <laughs> there's not really a way to look at someone and see their, at least I've never been able to do it, and I've been a painter my whole life. Uh, I'm told some people see painters, they go, yeah, that's, 
Yeah, it's a painter, I can tell. Look at him. That's my impression of their voice, by the way. Uh, I don't know, I've never seen that. I've never been able to look at someone and go, ah, oh, they're obviously a painter. Uh, I saw a poet once and thought that. I was in a cathedral um, on a Christmas Eve, I think. Yeah. My father had taken me to him with mass, I think. Maybe it was my mom. I don't know. Uh, but there was this guy with his leather jacket and he had this goatee. It's like backwards newsy hat. This old school leather biker jacket. Like the Fonz. And I was like, he's a poet. That's amazing. I can tell. <laughs> I could have been more than like 13 or 14, but uh, it stuck with me. It definitely stuck with me. Like an image of the artist. He probably wasn't even actually an artist. He was probably just some guy. But I remember romanticizing it and thinking, wow, that's really cool. I need to do that. I need to go and do those things. And I remember getting the jacket one year and wearing the hats and stuff like that. I couldn't quite grow the facial hair at that time. Uh, but it was uh, it was interesting. It was, uh, I imagine it kind of felt like the way people feel when they see Edgar Allan Poe for the first time. And they go, so that's what a writer looks like. And then they go, well, maybe not. And then they look at Mark Twain and they go, nope, nope, no, he's right. That's what a writer looks like. And they look at Vonnegut real quick. No, nope, same thing, yeah. It's just, uh, it's just funny. We have these preconceived notions in our minds, and, uh, they push us. In some way, shape, or form. Paint-covered overalls. I think I have a million brushes that I've gone through so far. Not a million, but a couple hundred. Each one has a power to it. Each one of it works uh, differently when I paint. It's powerful and it's beautiful. I don't know where this one's going to end, but I know it started. And I hope you enjoyed watching me create it so far. Who knows? Maybe I'll finish it one day. <laughs> it's huge, so who's to say? No one ever really knows where everything stops but we know where it goes.